Hello everyone. Let us continue learning C language. In our previous video, we discussed about how an array is initialized and used, how the memory is being allocated for an array. In this video, we'll discuss a lot about strings and string functions which are available built in with the string.h header file. And also we'll discuss more about creating our own string header file with more additional string functions. Let's get started. Now to begin with, Strings are none other than character array in terms of C language. String is not a separate exclusive or individual data type that is available in C. Rather, character arrays are constructed in such a way that it can be used as strings. When you talk about a character array, CHR represents your character data type. And to name an array, I'm calling it as STR, which will be the name of the array with some size. I'm leaving this as empty. So which means I should initialize the array with some character values. H, E, L, L, O. Now this STR is a character array of size five because I've got five elements in it. And the way it is stored is inside the memory, in the zeroth index, it would have stored H. In the first index, it would have stored E. Second index, L. Third index, L again. And in the last fourth index, it stores O. This is what stored in terms of character array STR. Now, this STR is not a string. Remember, this is not a string because any string, for that matter, a character array should end with a null character. Should end with a null character and that null character is none other than slash zero character. Now for you to understand much better, I'll also declare another character array with the name of ST, which again the size is not mentioned. Rather than giving it in this format, I'll call this as hello, which is enclosed within double quotes. If, would, if a character is enclosed within single quotes, these are called as characters. If it is enclosed within double quotes, it is called as a string. So I'm enclosing within double quotes. Now I want you to visualize this data, how it is being stored, for which we'll make use of the C tutor, which is available, which we used already. So the site name of the site is called Python tutor. In that we have a way to visualize the C language questions. So it is called the C tutor. Now here I'll show you, I'm creating two arrays. The first is a character array, it's simply a character array. H, E, L, L and O. Yes, I have stored it in a character array format and I'll also store another character array. In this, I'm directly storing the word hello. It is done. Now let us visualize this code and see what is the output we are expecting. This will show you the exact memory, how it is allocated and how you could visualize it. Now you could see inside the main stack memory, we have got two variables with the name of str and st. The size of str is only five characters, whereas size of st is six characters. Now, in the variable name called st, we have got only five characters, that is h-e-l-l-o in it. What is the last memory going to occupy? Let us see. Now you could see in the name, in the character array str, when it's stored in this fashion of giving characters individually, this is not considered as a string. Rather, when I provide this as a string directly, that is being considered as a string, the characters are segregated and stored in individual indexes, and it is ending with a slash zero null character. And this null character is an identifier for printing or storing any strings inside C language, inside the memory by C language.
and this is all about storing it storing a string inside inside the memory by c language and in order to handle strings in c language we have a exclusive format specifier called as percentage yes we have a very exclusive format specifier called percentage yes which is the format specifier for strings so not like any other arrays you need not index each and every character to print the characters on the screen you can literally use percentage yes to print the whole string onto the screen imagine if we have an integer array in tar of some empty size i'm going to give values of 36 45 70 91 20 in order to print all these values to the screen i desperately need a for loop to print all these values instead if this is a character array char st and it is not mere character array it is a string the way this welcome word will be stored as in memory you would have had all these characters in individual memory blocks w e l c o m and e and the last character would end with a slash zero null character and i don't need any sort of indexes to print this whole string the size of the whole string is 8 bytes as you have it here but still i don't need any sort of loops to print this whole string rather we can print this with the help of single print of statement and a simple format specifier called percentage yes comma st to print this whole value and by that means and by the help of this quick percentage yes format specifier strings are simplified in a much more easier way let's verify the same data with a code let's write it as a code and check this out i'm creating a new file with the name of string.s i'm starting with the basic header file which we needed standard input output dot h and i'm also including a header file called string dot h to perform some of the string operations not now but maybe later starting with the main function and in the main function i'm going to declare a character array called st with a size of 100 which i'm trying to give extra character space to the memory and over here i'm saying print f enter your name i'm receiving the name of a user and that name is scanned and stored inside a character array Then zero, and after seeing the name, I'm going to print a simple hi message. Hi, followed by the name, comma. I'm going to greet a message. Have a great day. And in the place of personages, I want to have a string, and that should be replaced from this variable called st. and you know that st is a character array that should be accessed with indexes for each and every character and to access the whole string you just need the name st alone you don't want any sort of uh, indexes to access it and same way even in the scanner statement the ampersand is not required the ampersand will be used only for individual characters to be required to be received and stored inside the memory to access the whole string it is enough we have the character array name alone now let's compile this code and check our output is right strings dot c hyphen o string here you could see the compilation is successful let's run this file again string and this is prompting me to enter my name so i'm going to type om prakash so that is my name and you could see the next line greet message which says hi om prakash have a great day and that is exactly the greet message which we have printed here 
and this is the simplest way of accessing the strings in c language now let us talk about some of the string functions that is available inside the string.h header file now after receiving the name now let us talk about printing number of characters inside the number of characters in my name so i'm going to say i'm going to create a variable called n which should store the number of characters in my name so which is can be done with the help of str len which says string length which will find the string length of my name and it is called str len which represents string length i'm printing it your name has percentage d characters your name and in within brackets i'll print the name has percentage d characters so i'm saying st comma n and ending with the return zero statement now let us again quickly compile and check the code i'm entering the name om prakash i'm entering the name om prakash you could see it says your name om prakash has got nine characters and this is a first function from string header file that is str len which represents string length and in this case i would also try to i'll also wanted to check another scenario when i run this file i'm going to enter my name which is my full name om prakash sai gopinath when i enter it now you could see it is grasping only my first name it is not completely receiving my full name it is not grasping my full name now what i should do to it what i should do in order to receive the whole string now the reason for capturing only the first name and not capturing my middle name and the last name is because there is a space between my first name and middle name and in terms of c language space is considered to be one of the escape sequence so the moment it spots an escape sequence it quits out of it so the alternative i can do is nothing but i have to instruct the compiler say do not stop receiving the input until you receive a slash n character until you receive a new line character for which within this part within scan of statement between percentage and yes i'll include square bracket cap slash n this means receive characters until new line character until new line character okay now i'll save this compile it run it again i'll give my name om prakash sai gopina now you could see it is collecting my complete full name and this until character it need not be a new line character all the time it can also be any sir other character for example in my case i'm going to specify t as a character the gopinath in the name it will capture until this value of t or even i can capture till the value of n so it should start capture only till gopi okay let's compile this i'll run this again i'll give the same input and see what happens you could see it has stopped reading the input the moment it saw a character of n from the user it has captured only till the character of n it has captured only om prakash sai gopi hope this idea was brilliant and this way of usage it is called until the cap symbol represents until you specify any character here until you see such a character the receiving input continues and the moment it sees one such character the first occurrence of that character the reading action stops so this is a primary and important component that you should know about strings with this we are done with the first function in string dot h header file that is string length now let us quickly move on to the next set of functions the second important function in terms of string header file is string reverse and string reverse is truly an important component that is read and accessed throughout string library and to perform string reverse action the task is pretty much simple i'll end with a slash n character as usual 
I'll not count the length. Rather, I would say S T R R E V of S T. So this reverses my string. I'll print the value print of your name in reverse is percentage is comma S T. So it replaces the whole by value with the same reverse value. I'll clear the screen. I'll compile it. I'll run this now. I'm going to enter my name. Only my first name and middle name. And when I run it, my name in reverse, it is reversed. Your name in reverse. Hope this idea was brilliant. So this is how the reverse function works. And let's quickly have the next function in string dot h header file. That is string concatenation. In order to perform string concatenation, I'll start reading it as I'll define names. I'll define variable names in a more legible, readable format. I'll say first hundred characters. This will represent the first name of the person. And I'll also have last hundred characters. Which will represent the last name of the person. So print f. Enter your first name. I'll read the first name from the user. Percentage yes. Comma first. I'll copy paste the same two lines for the next time, and where I'll Say this as enter your last name, and I'll scan that in the very block last. So here I'm going to calculate it as print f hi. I'll print the whole first name and a full stop, and the first character of the last name that is la that is percentage c. I'm going to greet this as have a Great day. So the full complete string of the first name is first, and only the first character of the last name is last. So it is last of zero, and end with a semicolon. And we have a new line character at the end, so that the printing goes to the new line. I'll clear the screen. I'll compile it. Run this again. It is asking me first name. I'm calling it as Om Prakash. It is asking for my first name, so I'm saying Gopinath. And now it says Om Prakash G. Have a great day with this G from my first character of my last name. Now, how do I concatenate it? How do I join first and last name? So I'll say character my name, which is of hundred characters, which I'll initialize with empty. Carrot empty string, which is no name. So to combine my name, I'll say str string concatenate of name, comma first name. I'm combining name and first name and storing it in the name itself. So this the literal action that is happening here is nothing but name is equal to name plus first. But since operator overloading is not possible, we are doing with the string function. After the first name, I should have a space S T R C A T of name, comma. First, I need a space between name and first name and last name. So I'm include I'm string concatenating with an empty space. The next line, I'm again string concatenating with name, comma, last. So this time, I need not worry about having two strings. I'll just say hi percentage yes, and in the place of first and last, I'll just say name. Now let us quickly compile this again and see what happens. So it is asking my first name. I'm calling it as Om Prakash. Under the name place of last name, I'm providing my last name here. And it says, "Hi, Om Prakash Gopinath. Have a great day." So which means it has concatenated both my first name and last name, and it has joined with the help of a space value. hope this was easy for you to understand and this is all about string concatenation which is yet another important feature that you have to remember and now let's quickly move on to the next main function in terms of string header file which is called as 
string compare comparing two strings now when you compare two strings the possible answer we could say is only yes or no but this function gives you three different possible outputs and let us see what are those so the name of this function is called string compare so it is called strcmp and inside the string compare function we are supposed to provide two strings so that could either be a direct string or it could be provided with the help of a character array so here let's say hello and hello in the same format the resulting output of this will be zero if you provide equal characters even the upper case and lower case should be same if you provide equal equal characters like this the output of this case is zero okay if in case we provide characters are not equal okay for example welcome hello now for this case what is output we are expecting since they are not equal this will not return zero this will not return zero but in case of a lexicographical arrangement which comes first the first word or the second word in dictionary obviously the second word comes first so it says minus 1 as the answer if the order is changed hello welcome the output is 1 let us verify these three sequences with the help of a c program print f percentage d slash n comma str cmp string compare of hello and hello same characters okay i'll copy this whole line again i'll paste it one more time once more and here i'm going to make this as hello comma welcome and welcome comma hello just to see what are the possible outputs we are expecting here i'm saving this i'll clear the screen compile it up again run this you could see it has printed 0 minus 1 and 1 because here hello comma welcome here the comparison happens in such a way that first word is lesser than the second word it gives me minus 1 first word is greater than the second word it gives me 1 the reverse lexicographical order and this string function string reverse function has different variations based upon the compilers sometimes in the modern gcc compiler standard ones of the 14 or 17th version we are having to output as 1 minus 1 or 0 in the older cases we had the difference between the ascii values returned as the output so this is all about comparing two strings with the help of a string compare function str cmp stands for string comparison and there is yet another important function to be used which is called copying the string copying the whole string from one string variable to another string variable so i'll call a character array st which will be empty string within which i'm going to call this word as hello world and i want to copy this whole string to another string so st2 which is also empty it's of size let me assume it as 20 i want to copy st to st2 completely it is st2 is equal to st this line won't work because these are arrays so instead of this line i have to use this function called strcpy it stands for string copy where i say st2 comma st and i'm going to i'll print this string for us to verify print f percentage yes comma st2 i'll save this i'll clear the screen compile it run it again so i'll say you could see it has printed successfully hello world it is copied from one string to another string yes and apart from these there are two more functions which we can use which is called str l w r which stands for string lower which will convert the whole characters into lower case characters now i'll quickly compile and run it again when i run this you could see the when i stored it i stored h with a capital case and w is a capital letter but now that is converted into lower case character and then printed so this is converting if there is any upper case character in your string that will be converted to your lower case characters that is string lower and this can be made 
रिवर्स विथ स्ट्रिंग यू पी आर विच इज टू कन्वर्ट स्ट्रिंग टू द अपर केसेस I'll compile and run it. You could see the whole world. The whole world is converted into hello world in uppercase letters. So, a quick recap of all the functions we have seen so far in terms of string header file. We talked about string length. We talked about string compare. We talked about string reverse. We talked about string concatenation. We talked about string lower. And we also discussed about string upper. So these six are the major string functions that is available inside string dot h header file. In our next video, we'll discuss about custom defining all these functions based upon our needs. See you in the next video. Thank you.